Hello, my name is Haley Gazinga and I'm a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Train. Today we will be talking about modeling makeup air systems and non-mechanical cooling in Trace 700. In this video we will discuss how to model makeup air systems to replenish air being exhausted in Trace 700. I will then demonstrate new features within the program to support applying non-mechanical cooling. We'll begin by discussing different applications of makeup air systems. Makeup air units replenish the amount of air exhausted from buildings or spaces. The amount of air exhausted from these spaces is typically dictated by building codes or standards. These systems are often found in hospitals and laboratories as they require air to be exhausted at a high rate to maintain a sterile and safe environment. They are also applied to commercial kitchens where there is a high volume of air leaving through the exhaust hoods to rid the kitchen of contaminants and odors. We will walk through examples on how to model these makeup air scenarios in Trace 700. Makeup air unit is sometimes also called a dedicated outdoor air unit. Sometimes they may be the same thing, but it can be important to distinguish between these terms. The primary function of a makeup air system is to replace the amount of air being exhausted from a space due to code requirements. The primary function of a dedicated outdoor air system is to supply the required amount of outdoor air to a space to meet the ventilation code. Modeling a dedicated outdoor air unit was discussed in a past newsletter video and will not be covered today. This video can be found in the e-learning library. Instead, we will focus on modeling makeup air systems that are used to replace the amount of air being exhausted from a building due to code. We will now discuss modeling a 100% outdoor air makeup air unit in Trace 700. If you are modeling a single system that is 100% outdoor air and has separate cooling or heating systems, this can be done on a room by room basis on the Create Rooms Airflows tab. This may also be done for all the rooms at once on the Create Templates Airflows tab. I do want to note that for a system to be 100% outdoor air, all rooms assigned to the system must be specified as 100% outdoor air. Keep in mind, this method does not account for building pressurization and the rooms will have balanced air flows. I will now demonstrate how to model a 100% outdoor air system in Trace 700. We will use an example of a hospital building to demonstrate modeling a 100% outdoor air system without the use of the DOA tab. We will want to access the Airflow tab of Create Rooms or Create Templates. In this example, I will apply 100% outdoor air to all of the rooms in the file through Create Templates. In the ventilation section, select the drop down in the type field and change the type from hospital room to 100% outdoor air. The cooling and heating fields default to 100% cooling airflow and 100% heating airflow respectively. If a minimum airflow must be supplied to the space, input the minimum airflow rate under the main supply section using the appropriate units. In this case, we will use a hospital room rate of 25 CFM per person. By default, Trace will calculate the supply airflow based on the loads for the space. If a VAV system is being modeled, input the heating minimum airflow rate in the VAV minimum section. If 0% return air is being modeled, enter 100% cooling airflow in the room exhaust section to exhaust the air at room level. Once the airflows have been applied, we will go to Create Systems to select the appropriate airside system and fans. In this case, a VAV with 30% reheat has been selected and the fans have been applied. We will then assign the rooms to the airside system and calculate the design results for the air handler. When viewing the results, we will focus on the system checksums to verify that we have 100% outdoor air brought into the system. We will focus on the Airflows and Engineering Check section, which are located on the right side of your System Checksums report. This will help us to confirm that we have 100% outdoor air with all of the air being exhausted from the room. We'll take a closer look at these sections so we can see that the main supply airflow 
is equal to the nominal ventilation airflow and the room exhaust is equal to those air flows. So that demonstrates 100% outdoor air for cooling and heating with all of the airflow being exhausted from the room. You can also confirm the 100% outdoor air by looking at the percent outdoor air in the engineering checks. Um, and then you may also see that the heating airflow follows a VAV min of 25 CFM per person as there are 1,000 people in this system and the heating airflow of 25,000 gives you that minimum. The airflow is also balanced with an equal amount of exhaust and supply air. Now what if the room doesn't have balanced airflows? Let me first mention a limitation that must be considered in TRACE 700. Within TRACE 700, spaces are not positively or negatively pressurized. In other words, outdoor airflow entering a room must be equal to the exhaust airflow. The equation TRAY 700 uses is ventilation plus infiltration is equal to room exhaust plus system exhaust. Why are we concerned about pressurization? Exhaust hoods are commonly applied in kitchens to remove airborne grease, combustion products, fumes, smoke, odors, heat, and steam by evacuation of the air from the space. They can negatively pressurize a space, which will prevent contaminants from entering adjacent spaces, like the dining room. They may also be used for industrial or manufacturing processes to remove contaminants and odors from the air, specifically in painting booths and where chemicals are heavily used. I will demonstrate how to model a kitchen exhaust stud, but first must mention a limitation that must be considered in TRACE 700 for exhaust hoods. TRACE 700 will not allow a room to be assigned to more than one system. If the room has a cooling and or heating supply airflow in addition to the hood, then the supply air for the hood will need to be transferred from another room. It is necessary to model the kitchen exhaust hood with transfer air to simulate the pressurization in the space. If you model the scenario shown in this slide using the DOA tab with room direct, to create two systems or coils, the program won't negatively pressurize the space. You would also be forced to transfer air from an adjacent space, which may give you undesirable results. The easiest way to do this is to create a dummy room and then transfer the air from that room, as I will now explain in an example. We will now model the kitchen exhaust hood shown in the previous slide. We will first create a room with one by one dimensions. No internal loads will be applied to this space. As you can see, there are no lighting, miscellaneous, or people loads. This room will act as a false or dummy room, transferring air to the kitchen. We will now navigate to the Airflows tab to enter a CFM value for the main supply cooling and heating airflow that will match the kitchen exhaust hood CFM. In this case, it would be 8,000 CFM for each. We'll also set the ventilation type to 100% outdoor air as was done in the last example. We will not enter anything for adjacent air transfer from room or room exhaust on this screen. We will now create a new system. This will represent the unit supplying air to the exhaust hood. This must be a VAV with 30% reheat and fixed supply air temps. Choosing a constant volume system will cause the coil to modulate upwards because there is no load in this space. Once we have input set temperatures for the cooling supply, min and max, and the heating supply, min and max, we will then go back to the create rooms and input a VAV minimum in the dummy room airflows tab. This VAV min must be 100% of the cooling airflow to avoid ramping down the airflows. Once this value is input, we will assign the dummy room to the dummy system that we have just created. The kitchen has already been created and assigned to its own system. If you have not yet created your kitchen, do so at this time. Within the Airflows tab, input any airflows in addition to hood exhaust. 
enter the value of the hood exhaust in the room exhaust field of the kitchen. This should equal the airflow you set up in the dummy room. You would then select the dummy room from the adjacent air transfer from room field on the top right. We will now calculate the file. After doing so, airflows can be viewed on the airflow balance report found on the detailed reports page. Now that the file has been calculated, we navigate to the detailed reports tab to view the airflow balance report. This report shows how the airflows are being delivered to or transferred from the rooms. Once the image is more stable, we will be able to see the 8000 CFM of adjacent airflow transferred out of the dummy room in the room airflows heading into the kitchen under the room inflows heading as the adjacent airflow into the kitchen space. This is in the top section on this report. Now that we have covered modeling makeup air units and exhaust hoods in Trace 700, we will now discuss non-mechanical cooling. Non-mechanical cooling is the process of supplying outdoor air to cool a space without the use of a water chiller or mechanical refrigeration. This functionality was recently added to Trace 700 version 6.3.1 to comply with 90.1-2010 section G31292 to provide non-mechanical cooling in heating only systems. Non-mechanical cooling is often modeled in combination with heating and ventilation systems and in buildings or spaces where occupant comfort is less critical, such as warehouses, parking garages, or factories. I will now demonstrate how to apply non-mechanical cooling to a Trace 700 model. I have created a file with a one-room warehouse building. All of the room inputs have already been entered aside from those required to model non-mechanical cooling. We navigate to the Create Rooms Airflows tab where the cooling ventilation airflow must be provided by the user via the room exhaust section. The room exhaust schedule needs to reflect one of the existing 90.1 non-mechanical cooling schedules which only turns the room exhaust fan on when the room temperature exceeds the selected temperature, in this case 85 degrees. The non-mechanical cooling schedules are defined by the reset and lockout table in the utilization schedule library. This table tells the program that the fan will only turn on when the room temperature is greater than 85 degrees. When set up properly, the room exhaust fan comes on, drawing outdoor air directly into the room equal to the amount it exhausts to the atmosphere. This also requires the 90.1 non-mechanical cooling fan be specified as a room exhaust fan on the Create System fan screen. We've already selected our heating and ventilation system and now select the 90.1 non-mechanical cooling fan on the Fans tab. Once we have set the room exhaust values in the Create Rooms Airflow screen and applied the room exhaust fan in Create Systems fans, we can calculate the file and see that the room is being cooled with no action by the cooling coil. We will need to perform the energy calculations to view the equipment energy consumption report in TRACE. TRACE calculates non-mechanical cooling by increasing infiltration to equal the room exhaust that was input. You'll notice that the room exhaust fan is showing 320 CFM. This is equal to the amount of ventilation that is needed in the space. You'll also see that this fan is not operating during the heating months. It's only operating when cooling is needed. It's exhausting that 320 CFM brought in by the increased infiltration to meet the ventilation demands. One thing you may want to be aware of is that applying this strategy on a system with a cooling coil may cause the systems to challenge each other. It's typically recommended to apply this with a heating only system to avoid this conflict. This completes our discussion on makeup air, exhaust hoods, and non-mechanical cooling. Hopefully we've answered any questions you have on these features, but if you would like more details on this or any other elements of Trace 700, here are some additional resources available to you. And as always, please feel free to contact the CDS Support Center by phone or email with any comments, questions, or modeling issues you may be experiencing. 
Thank you for joining me today.